You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the September 9th, 2024 meeting of the Michigan City Redevelopment Commission. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Good evening. Welcome. Um, I, uh, welcome to the uh, Michigan City Redevelopment Commission regular meeting. Today is Monday, September 9th at 5 p.m. At this time, I'll go ahead and I'll take our roll call. Tom Dombrowski? Here. Bill Gittner? Here. Clarence Halsey? Here. Sheila Matias is absent. Tracy Tillman? Present. Shree Wilson, present. Um, am I missing someone? Nope, you got everybody. Don't like I missed someone. Okay. Um, that reflects the quorum, and we can go proceed with our meeting. Okay, the third item on our agenda today is the approval of the minutes for the 8 12 24 session and the 8 12 regular hybrid session. Do I have a motion to approve our minutes? Motion. So I have. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 And there was no nays, right? Thank you. There you go. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the claims for uh, the month of September 9th. Absolutely. Give me one second. Okay. Uh, this is a claims docket for Department of Redevelopment, September 9th, 2024. Uh, in August, we had payroll, CDBG reimbursable staff and commissioners. Uh, in our operating account, we have corporate payment systems for impact registration for travel for S York. That is a conference that I will be attending in October. Uh, Great American Financial copier fees for 2024. Saranac Law Offices for legal retainer for August of 2024. From our North TIF, we have Barnes and Thornburg uh, legal services for blocks and arbitration ending July 31st, 2024. Barnes and Thornburg for legal services for redevelopment and economic matters ending in 73124. HRP construction for construction of interceptor trench at 8th Street pay app five which is the final pay um we had nipsco for electric service for ev stations eighth street at or i'm sorry as of 9 3 2024 blue shally plus shadowly racher and brawn for legal fees for trail creek properties expenses and advances june 2024 sarenock law offices for legal services for north tiff august 2024 the Chicago Consultants Studio for Consulting Fifth and Pine Street Development, 7-1-2024 through 7-31-2024. Wallach, Summers, and Haas for Legal Services for You Are Beautiful for July 2024. Wallach, Summers, and Haas for Legal Services for the Transit Center for May, 30, uh, May 30th, 2024. From the South TIF, we have Global Engineering for Engineering of CCMG 2024 dash one six twenty four twenty four through seven twenty one twenty four Haas and Associates for South Tiff Connectivity Improvement Projects for seven fifteen twenty twenty four through eight twelve twenty twenty four Scenic Law Offices for Legal Services South Tiff August uh twenty twenty four uh and then uh we also had a 2018 ohio street bond u.s bank requisition 45 baker tilly arbitrage compliance okay do we have a motion to accept the claims as presented motion to accept claims for september 9 2024 um rdc second all in favor say aye Aye. And there were no nays. Next item on our agenda is item number five, financial report for July 31st. This is a MC Department of Redevelopment balance sheet, July 31st, 2024. Uh, cash, our operating account, we have $108,275.31. 
In the Southside TIF account, we have $8,425,298.74. In our Southside TIF debt reserve account, we have $336,308.50. And our Southside TIF capital account, we have $16,199.79. In our North End TIF account, we have $3,660,565.19. In our East Side TIF, we have $579,917.73. In our Northeast TIF account, we have $898,688.90. Uh, loans receivable, we have a county business loan fund for $133,333.00 for a total assets of $14,153,587.21. Can I have a motion to accept the uh, financial report as presented? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 And there were no nays. Okay, our next item on the agenda is item number six for public comment. We, at this time, we'd like to take and invite the public to speak. Uh, yes, good evening. This is Tommy Kolovic from 1316 Ohio Street. Now, a lot of people on social media, the question is, when is the solo going to start? You know, it's been a year since we've had our groundbreaking. You know, we had our big, big to-do we had last year. We'll remember that. Now, what was really important to me, you know, basically the city owns two of those big parcels and redevelopment cones owns a couple slivers of that. You know, once they get, it needs the, my, but my answer is the ownership hasn't changed hands of that. You know, once the ownership gets to change hands from the city and the redevelopment to the developer, then that property gets back on the tax rolls. You know, that's, that's really what we're looking for to, you know, to add to our local uh, property tax base. I just also want to announce that the county will be having another tax sale on October the 16th. There's usually about 200 parcels here within the city that's going to be on the sale. They have those maybe once or twice a year. That's so what I'd like to maybe take a page out of Commissioner Matias's book. I remember when she was the county commissioner, she would often, often do a LaPorte County business spotlight. I'd like to do a Michigan City spotlight. You know, it's, it's been about 15 years now since we rolled out the dark blue refuse toters. And I'd like to do a, a, a about this. It's not an advertising recommendation for a business. It's a professional trash can cleaning service. They serve on Michigan City, Long Beach, and Michigan Shores. Midwest Clean Can. Let us take care of the dirty work. We pick up your dirty cans to degrease, sanitize, and pressure wash, and drop them off. Clean at your home. I've seen what they do. They they, they come back just as good as new. Uh, the rates are thirty dollars per can, forty dollars for two can and $15 for each additional can after that. Uh, and their telephone number is 219-402-6027. Uh, 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 they're part of the Midwest Electronics, and you know it's a really good business, and I just want to thanks for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. Hello, board. Scott Mellon, here in Kenwood Place. Um, I too was going to ask about Sola. I'm just wondering if we could have an update. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have an agenda in front of me. I don't know if it's on the agenda, but uh, it is. The fantastic one. Yeah. Sorry to be redundant then. Uh, same thing with the Pine Street. I know you have several, you, you, you've pared it down to three proposals. I was wondering if there's any uh, headway on, on the request for proposal for the Pine Street project. And I have a couple things about the two way on Franklin. I know this project is going forward. I know there's a lot of support for it. I've, uh, met with uh, Global Engineering and Shem a couple times. Uh, I'd just like to point out something, I think, two questions. I asked Shem this. I'm like, what's the total budget for the project? And he couldn't give me an answer. And I know there's an unknown as the condition of the base, the base condition of the road. We won't really know what the total project cost is until you see what you're dealing with. But I think we should have, what, what's the range? I mean, what's our, you know, how much is it? I know we've got grant money for the paving and I know our, I know you guys are covering basically the rest of it with TIF money, TIF, TIF. Um, but it'd be nice to know what the total budget is. And my only comment about it after attending his engineering uh, office a couple of times and reading a lot of comments on Facebook about it, um, I think one of the things people are forgetting, when Franklin was last two ways, it was a four lane road with parallel parking. Now it will be one lane in each direction. 
And as I've spoken out about in the previous meeting, I don't know if it was here or, or Common Council, I predict a conga snail line of traffic going down the street um, because now we're going to be stuck with no, no way around. You're, you're just going to be stuck with people backing into traffic. Um, there's going to be heavier traffic in the single lane since it's not two lanes. It'll be harder to back out. Unfortunately, the plan doesn't really allow for delivery drop-off zones, so I predict delivery trucks are just going to park in the lane more often than not, creating congestion or creating blockage. So I just wanted to point out that last time it was two ways, it was a four-lane road. And I think the single lane is, in effect, I think it may be a mistake, but I know it's going forward and we'll see what happens, but I just want it on the record that I said that. Thank you. Okay, anyone else from the public? I'd like to come forth? Okay, I'd like to thank those members of the public because I took notes. <laughs> okay. Um, next item is, oh, I'm sorry. Do we have anyone from online that would like to take and make public comment? No. No? No. Okay. Okay, well, Continue with our agenda. Okay, item number seven is the review of the uh, facade grant request for funding at 113 West 8th Street. And I would like to invite uh, Sam Hook up to yeah. talk about the project along with Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. <clears throat> thank you both. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Kyle provided you an updated uh, letter as well, but he'll go through it. Yes. Uh, good good evening, board. Uh, I am here with Sam. Um, he has applied for the facade grant program at uh, 113 West 8th Street. Um, so what he is requesting is the forgivable reimbursement um, of a of the loan of thirteen thousand um, dollars, and this will be for brick repointing, uh, replacing ten ten windows. Ten window. Ten windows. Roof cap, um, as well as the flashing and the roof cap, um, for a total uh, investment cost of uh, twenty one thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars, and he has met all of the requirements. Uh, he was approved through the Historic Preservation Board, mm -hmm. um, August twentieth, twenty twenty four, and I have Sam next to me. If you have any questions for him. Okay. Sam, tell us how long how long have you guys been in business there? Um, it has been twelve years now. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for staying. Years, here. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for reinvesting. The last piece of the project, um, we replaced the roof last year. We got solar panels. Of course, we were here for that. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot of work done inside the building. Oh, I'm sorry, a lot of work done inside the building. So the facade is kind of the last piece with the brick needing attention. Okay. Um, and also the windows, um, they're all leaking. Uh, they're double pane glass that are leaking, so it's time to replace those. So yeah, um, saw that this grant was available and thought I'd apply for it to see if there's any anything that we've done with it. So absolutely, any consideration, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, you've made big. big I've seen you make make investments into your building too without our help. So we yeah. really appreciate that as well. Definitely not. Okay. Do I have a motion to accept? A motion to accept the facade grant uh, for funding of 113 West 8th Street in the amount of $13,000. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 And there were no nays. Awesome. Thank Thanks you so much. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you for continuing to invest in downtown. Thank you. Okay. Uh, right. uh, Kyle, where are you going? <laughs> stay with us kyle stay with us <laughs> so can i introduce this next one yeah mr. Please. mr mr Pre mr president um so our next order of business um we've made some changes to our facade grant application um i believe we talked about making some changes to it and i'm going to let kyle go through what those changes are do you do you recall what they are we need to formally adopt them though um I mean, I'll, I can go briefly through some of the more major changes. A lot of them were just changing a few words here and there. But in terms of the major changes, um, no major changes were made on the first, play, first page 
other than um, that the property is going to have to be uh, taxed commercially, um, which is kind of how this program works. It runs off of TIF dollars. And for um, to be able to access these funds, it needs to be taxed commercially um, because that money is essentially what runs the program as well as that's what goes back into uh essentially we don't we don't generate any uh tiff off of residentially taxed structures so four or more units we do generate commercial tax off of that and they are identified in our if you look at a beacon uh a tax card you'll see it you'll see a tiff assessment attached to those commercial properties and hence the uh, we keep getting asked about um, houses and things like that, but we we really don't we don't draw anything off of that. So we really are this program is really focused on commercial structure or commercially taxed that generate the TIF to reinvest in itself. I guess you could say. So on on the second page, everything has primarily stayed the same, except for um, we added the removal of chain link fence. And I think par a portion of that had to do more with aesthetics, um, that as we are trying to improve um, our TIFs, we want to try to improve the opportunities of uh, fencing options. Looking more toward um, either in the historic district that would be more historically appropriate, um, with respect to uh, downtown, maybe getting more uh, wrought iron, uh, wrought iron look. I won't call it wrought iron because yeah. we don't really do wrought iron anymore. But that look, that uh, the something more decorative or something more appealing from a curb standpoint, um, and really just kind of discouraging the use of chain link in certain areas that may not have the same aesthetics as um, something a little bit more appropriate. So on the third page, um, some of the changes we included was, uh, and these are for uh, non-eligible um, items, and that was bars on windows um, to um, resurfacing of parking lots, uh, landscaping, as well as um, providing funds for chain link fences, kind of as Skylar um, mentioned previously. And those were the major um, changes to the document. Um, outside of that, everything else is more of changing some of the wording around um, how what we're calling the the facade program in terms of removing the north end as you recently approved allowing uh, Michigan Boulevard, um, so as well as going south. So we've really gotten away from the north end and we've kind of expanded our just in facade grant in general, mm -hmm. um, which it used to be the arts district, Uptown Arts Facade Program. And then it went from to the north end. And now it's really just a facade program with respect to we have um, other areas of town that we're that we're doing this and are trying to encourage this in. Um, hence the changing of the name. So that's really all the major changes um, from the previous edition that was done in 2019. Any questions of us or why we decided to do this? Um, not really a question. I'm just glad to see this and that is now more broader for other um, businesses to utilize this that's out there. And I just want to just publicly say, East Side businesses and establishments, please look into this one yes. for your businesses. Specifically down Michigan yes. Boulevard, it's available. We yes. uh, made that, that that change quite a while back. Uh, we've had people inquire, but I don't think anyone's quite filed one yet. No, so, not yet. Um, anyways. And Michigan Boulevard has a lot of historic property. It's just not in a historic district. Mm -hmm. So this is great that it's inclusive for them now. You guys have an updated map so far? We we do. We do. Tony has done a map. Uh, we just really haven't 
I guess unveiled it because we wanted to get this, but we did we did say that we would be taking applications for it, even though we hadn't changed officially the name. But now, changing the name, getting the map, pretty pretty much the map's pretty easy to understand. Um, yeah, and Tony's made an updated map for it. Yes, yes. And if I may, and there is um, there's no deadline to submit these applications, correct? No, these are rolling applications. Um, we don't, uh, you know, you don't have to have it in by January 1st or anything like that. It really is a rolling application. Um, it's a little bit more work on Kyle's um, hands, but but with respect to, um, I mean, I guess people buy and change business and hands of businesses. So it's like it's hard to do a deadline on it uh, because we, we really need to be kind of responsive to, you know, I guess the cha the changing of ownership or the opportunities to get loans to do projects you know things of that nature so it makes it a little bit more flexible and i just have one more if i may yeah. this doesn't go retro back to any new if any business did any type of development can this go retro back i would say that that is a purview of this commission mm -hmm. that answer that question yes <laughs> um it has happened before but I think it's at the purview of your commission. Uh, you are, I would say, correct me if I'm overstating. I think it's at the, I think it's up to this commission to decide that. Okay, thank you. I just had a quick question. Uh, number one, very supportive of this program. I think it's great that we're expanding it. Uh, we're going to be able to pick up some additional opportunities here. Um, can you go back for a quick second on the the housing requests that you're getting? Because so from what from my understanding, it's based on the zoning, right? Or, or the no? probably more or less how it's taxed. It how probably taxed. Is really okay. a zoning issue because we will end up with four plexes in single family. I would say we probably don't have too much of that. I'm just giving that as an example. We probably don't have a lot of it downtown because it's pretty but we could have that on Michigan Boulevard. I could see that over there where you still get a house that's maybe say zoned uh, B2, but it's being used as single family. So it's actually zoned commercially, but being used as a single family. So it's still taxed single family. Yeah, I think we have a few of those on, on Franklin for sure, with, especially with the like a um, storefront and then in the back, you know? So those are typically taxed mixed use. Those are kind of the ones that really the reason why this facade grant was created was to deal with uh, the mixed or mixture, the, the mixed use buildings. Originally, we just kind of naturally kind of uh, like an amoeba kind of spread out a little bit and went to where I feel like we did a really good job on those mixed use projects downtown. So now we've kind of expanded. But the reality is that we don't really we don't we actually do not draw a TIF off of uh, residentially uh, residentially used and taxed. Uh, properties and typically um, the way we do TIFs now we would really kind of carve out those single family uses because they really have an effect on the on the they bring down the base of that TIF actually they have the opposite effect on putting them in there so if you look at some of the newer TIFs you might see heavy residential areas carved out of them for a reason um, but a lot of our older TIFs were established prior to kind of that practice Appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve as presented the revised facade grant application? Motion to approve the uh, revised facade grant application. Do I have a second? I'll second. Those in favor say aye. 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 And we have no nays. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle, for all your hard work. Okay, item number nine on our agenda today is resolution 1-24, preliminary determining to issue tax increment revenue bonds, known as the Lake Ave lift station. So we're gonna call it a couple of things. You probably hear, you may, have, you may hear Mr. Wallace call it the B&E uh, sewer. Uh, but for the purposes of what we're doing uh, with respect to the bond, I think we're labeling this the Lake Ave relief station or leaf st lift station uh, but tonight we have um mr randolph from pola uh, we have mr al wallace who's uh, helping us out with the sanitation department and i'd like for him to tell us a little bit about the need 
to, of why we need this to start off with. And then I do have Mr. Andy Mauser out here too, and he's provided kind of some financial analysis with regard to really why we should do this with respect to um, the, the RIF and the opportunity we have with that RIF, uh, which was a residential infrastructure fund. And it was granted to us. Uh, basically, we received it through the uh, Indiana Finance Authority. And so with that, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Wallace tell us a little bit about like what's the purpose of this? Why do we need it? And then we'll go into the actual um, getting it moving. Sure. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. Al Wallace with Christopher Burke Engineering appearing before you today on behalf of the Sanitary District uh, with regard to the Lake Avenue List Station project. Um, if you recall, this uh, has come before the Redevelopment Commission uh, back in February. There was a funding commitment from the Redevelopment Commission uh, to fund uh, engineering services for this project. And the purpose behind the project is uh, this addresses a critical area of the sanitary sewer network within Michigan City, uh, particularly in the area of the Amtrak turning bridge, uh, just north of the Blue Chip Casino uh, complex. So at this location, there's three different main sanitary sewer networks converging all into one sewer. But we have one of the sewer networks, everything from Washington Park, uh, all the park department offices, uh, port authority, uh, all the buildings, uh, water department facility uh, comes into one sewer towards the Amtrak turning bridge. We have a second main uh, sewer uh, main coming in from Lakeshore Drive area. Uh, there's uh, three different lift stations there, Beach Walk, um, and all the sewers coming down Lakeshore Drive converge at Amtrak. Uh, turning bridge as well. And then the third main sewer is uh, Highway 12 extended all the way down to Carwick Road. So there's a considerable amount of drainage area providing uh, wastewater all into one line as it converges uh, around the turning bridge. So what we want to do with this project is uh, for current users of that line and future development in that whole broad area, uh, we want to provide additional capacity uh, so we can facilitate uh, uh, making sure our current customers are served properly and allow for future development if that were to occur. Uh, so mainly what we're trying to do is the uh, lines from Lakeshore Drive will intercept those, uh, remove those from the Amtrak Turning Bridge area, and then all of the sewers coming down Highway 12 uh, will intercept those as well, and we'll put in this new list station on Highway 12, uh, basically right across where the new brewery is over there, uh, where the old um, railroad tracks used to be. Uh, once we construct this lift station, uh, everything will be taken off the Amtrak area from those two areas. We'll install a force main to the wastewater treatment plant and bypass all the other sewers. So it's of critical importance to the sanitary district uh, to protect our ratepayers who are coming through those lines and then provide opportunity for future developers to have access to uh, that capacity. So in a nutshell, that's uh, the importance of this project. Thank you so much. Um, who wants to go first? Uh, where do we want to start? Randy, are you online? Can you hear me, Randy? Hey, Randy. Oh, hey, sorry about that. I think I was muted. No, you're okay. Should we start with um, the mechanism that we're creating? And and I will say that this is a brand new program through the Indiana Finance Authority. So we're probably going to be one of the first ones to actually execute this project, I would say, one of the first. So bear with us. But Randy, do you want to uh, start and tell them what the mechanism we're creating and what we're doing with it? And then I think bring up Andy or if you guys want to tag team it at the same time, talk about the financial implications and things of like that. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, I, I could, um, I can speak to the, um, uh, to the process. And for some reason, I'm, it doesn't look like my camera is working. So I apologize for that. You're okay. Um, we can hear you good. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, essentially what you've described the, the Indiana finance authority through legislation, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, or last year, I guess, actually um, provided for this residential infrastructure financing 
uh, plan and it essentially is to help local communities uh, develop uh, workforce housing and, and other housing developments. And obviously housing is uh, critical all around the state these days and frankly, all around the country. And so this was the Indiana Finance Authority's uh, response to that. It provides a low interest loan effectively um, to communities that apply and that qualify and, and certainly Michigan City applied and qualified. And so um, the process would be from the state's perspective, uh, they will run it very similar to their um, uh, SRF program, uh, uh, their uh, sewage works and water works program they have. They loan out money at lower interest rates than you could get in the market. Um, and uh, that's, the, you know, you basically pay it back over time. And so the idea is here that um, the redevelopment district would issue a tax increment revenue bond to the Indiana Finance Authority to evidence that loan that would be provided by the IFA through their residential infrastructure program. Um, and the action you're taking tonight is the preliminary bond resolution. It's the first step in the process to provide for the issuance of that bond to the Indiana Finance Authority. Um, the bond itself, and Andy will speak more about this, will be payable solely from tax increment revenue from the consolidated north area and south area. Um, there'll be no no property tax backup. It will be a pure, what is known as a pure TIF revenue bond. Um, so it's a little different than what you've done in the past with some of the lease financings, um, but it will be paid from that TIF revenue and Andy will speak to the, to the numbers uh, showing you that there's sufficient tax increment to be able to do this. Um, the benefit to the city and to the redevelopment district is, again, you can borrow the money from the IFA at a substantially reduced interest rate than you could if you were going out to the market to do a pure tax increment revenue bond. And so the first action tonight is to consider a preliminary bond resolution. The resolution really does little more than describes what the project is and sets out the terms. And essentially, we're, uh, the parameters for the financing would be a bond in an amount not to exceed $4.8 million. Um, it would have a final maturity not later than January 15th, 2024, um, and it would have an interest rate that wouldn't exceed 3%. And I think the rate, Andy will uh, can follow up on this, but I think the rate will be slightly less than 3%, as I recall. Um, but uh, the term would be effectively 20 years at that rate. This action tonight basically starts the process. Um, the resolution indicates that it's not a controlled project, um, and that, uh, and you may be familiar with that language in some of the recent, the most recent transaction for the station block we did. Um, for those of you who were on the commission, then essentially we're saying that we do not have to go through additional approvals that would be required for a bond that would be expected to be paid from property taxes. These, this will not have a property tax pledge at all. It will be payable solely from the tax increment revenues that would be made available from that consolidated area. Uh, the resolution also authorizes a couple of notices to be published that are part of the process. Um, and just to speak about the calendar. With this first action tonight, we will get those notices published uh, probably by the end of the week. Um, and we would have uh, an action before the Common Council in their October, one of their October meetings, and we would come back. Um, uh, we're anticipating coming back to you all at the October meeting as well to provide for final approval, which would be the adoption of a bond resolution and hold the hearing that's required uh, to appropriate the proceeds of that loan that the IFA would provide. So that's a, a quick overview of the of the process, the initial resolution, and then I'm sure Andy can uh, share with you more of the financial details as well and uh, anything else you would want to add about the IFA process. Thank you. Um, good evening again, Andy Mauser with Baker Tilly. Um, I did pass around um, just a set of numbers. I'll go through those um, quickly and try to be brief, but certainly happy to to answer any questions. Um, essentially, what's being done here um, is you will be approving a um, tax increment revenue bond. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this will look like a low interest loan, as Randy mentioned, and also I think a low cost loan. Um, and I will kind of walk through um, a couple points there for some savings kind of compared to traditional financing. Um, but it will be set up as a bond and then rather than being sold to the open market, um, it will be sold to the IFA directly, um, which is why we're able to achieve those favorable terms. 
Um, as Randy mentioned, your resolution has a maximum par amount of 4.8 million. Um, we currently anticipate that would be um, right around 4.6 million. Um, again, it will be paid purely from TIP revenues. Um, it does allow for a, a maturity of up to 20 years. Um, we do think there may be some value in shortening that up to about 16 years to coincide with the expiration of your TIP areas. Um, and I can show you that here momentarily. Um, and then a maximum interest rate of 3%, um, but we've currently been quoted 2.62 um, by IFA. So certainly better than we could do um, you know, with the open market currently. Um, just a few pages I'll maybe highlight in the analysis. Um, the third page takes a look at um, kind of anticipated repayment um, if we were to elect to proceed with the 20-year option. Um, so you can see a $4.6 million borrowing uh, repaid across 20 years um, at a 2.62% interest rate results in total interest of about 1.3 million. And it would be a total annual payment of about 310,000 all the way through. Um, I did also prepare then on the um, next page is um, a slightly shorter option. Um, so many of your TIP areas will begin to expire in 2039. Um, this would um, this obligation would then be payable um, from your TIF last collected in December of 2039 and a final payment in January of 2040. Um, but this is you know, essentially the same thing. I'm at a shortened 16 year term. Um, so you can see um, the same 4.6 million at 2.62%, but over 16 years rather than 20 years, um, saves almost 300,000 in total interest. And it um, has a pretty minimal effect. Your um, annual payment would be about 375,000 instead of 310. So slight increase there, but it um, again, some um, pretty significant savings and then it does coincide better with your TIF areas. Um, again, low interest on this loan. Um, if we were to do similar to what you've done in the past, which would be a, a bond with a property tax backup, we would most likely be maybe in the four to 5% range currently. So again, here we're right at 2.62, um, pretty significant reduction. And then um, also in conversations with IFA, there'll be um, currently no requirement to fund a debt service reserve. Um, so typically you would set aside one full um, year's worth of payments. That would be about another 375 that would come out of bond proceeds and have to be set aside for the full life of the bond. Um, and because your healthy coverage levels, um, they are not currently requiring um, any reserve to be funded. Um, and then maybe the last page that I would highlight um, would then be, um, look back here, would it be on page seven? Um, so this takes a look at um, your consolidated TIF, which includes north side, south side, and what we expect to be received from station block going forward. Um, this compares it to all obligations you have payable from the north side TIF area, um, the south side TIF area, the 2023 station block bonds, and then um, the 370,000, um, again, with the 16 year repayment on the new bonds. And you'll see your coverage um, in the next five or so years remains uh, north of 150%. So for every dollar of debt service, you got about $1.50 in revenues coming in. And then um, the tightest it would be in the future is about 134%. So still very health healthy coverage. Um, and this again, assumes no growth. So obviously with all the investment being made, we would hope those TIF um, areas would continue to increase in the future. I guess with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Andy, could I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, when do we need to decide 16? Do we need to decide 16 versus the, the traditional uh, before we finalize, I assume? I think we've got some time, but probably maybe in the next couple months before we would, um, I assume we'll kind of price formally with IFA okay. November, December timeframe. Okay. Um, so you could, you know, approve 20 years tonight um, and that would give you the ability to go up to 20 okay. years, but then we could shorten it. Um, okay. What were you official? Okay. Make it official. Because you're right. I mean, there is quite a bit of savings on that versus the impact per year, you know, for, I mean, and, and that's at no growth. I mean, I'm assuming like we're assuming no, we're going to see growth, if you will. So, yeah. absolutely. And Andy, I might mention too, I guess. Uh, so we do the final bond resolution in October. Presumably we would do the same then. We would approve not to exceed 20 years. And um, we, yeah, like you said, we could wait probably until, uh, you were filing the financial reports in November, I would think, to be able to decide 16 or 20, but you could have further discussion at the October meeting if you wanted to, but I would suggest just doing the bond resolution still not to exceed 20 then as well, the final bond resolution. And I should add, I apologize. I, um, I'm actually out of town, and so I couldn't be there in person. And um, 
Tom in our office. He had another meeting, so I'm I'm uh, that's why I'm I'm virtual tonight. Um, I might add to this. Um, uh, Mr. Wallace gave us a great explanation, but also he is working with our engineering department um, and uh, the engineers of record, the GLE, to make sure that the engineer of record, Mr. John Kremke, and uh, because simultaneously what's happening is we're finishing up the engineering documents for a $4.6 million project, which is not a small project. And then we have to bid out that project, receive bids, and have bids in hand when we go to closing. So Mr. Wallace has laid us out kind of a simultaneous uh, process that's going to run at the same time as we're doing this process. So just keep that in mind that... Uh, I guess I would just say we, that we're, I would say we're pretty firm on what we've got. We do have maybe a little bit of wiggle room, but there's very little in this with respect to IFA wants this to get this kind of wrapped up by, I'd say no later than what, the second week of December, Randy? That's kind of as, as far as we could get them to push, right? Right. We And the way the, yeah, just to get into the calendar, um, we will pre-close on December 3rd and then close on December 17th. It's just an oddity of the IFA where they have two weeks in between. And at that pre-closing, everything basically has to be done. And Andy, am I right in thinking, and, and we may need to think about the timing of the bidding, because uh, the financial documents you would submit to the IFA, you would need uh, information regarding the bidding projects uh, by then as well, wouldn't you? Or at least have a final number? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When, when do you need that by? Just to be clear, I can confirm with them, but it would probably be a little bit ahead of that December um, third, December third yeah. pre closing. I, I think, Mr. Wells, I think we were in November when we had bids back. Yeah, well, that's what I saw, and I'll, I'll get you guys, um, Mr. Wallace's schedule to that. Okay. I think I was going to say I think we had I think I had talked with him uh, the end of last week, and I think. If I saw an email, you were anticipating receipt of bids around the 19th or around the 20th, I believe. And Andy, I was thinking, I think we just went kind of on a standard SRF schedule, thinking that would be due, your financial report and our closing documents would be due around the 19th. So we may need to just talk to the IFA if we can maybe slip a couple of days. Okay. Happy to reach out. Yeah. Any other questions about the process, what we're doing, why we're doing it? Um, what, anything like that from the commission? I, and, um, I'm sorry, the other one other thing I thought of um, is with this bond financing, with this IFA loan, the one thing you've not had to do before, the one thing that makes this one a little bit different, it is better because of the low interest rate that you couldn't get out into the market. Um, we will be formally pledging the tax increment revenues to pay this debt back. So there will be a bit of a change going forward in the event that you ever in the future decided to pledge, you would have to meet a parity test uh, which essentially means, and Andy can explain it, the financial implications, but you effectively would have to know if you were to issue some future bond where you wanted to pledge the TIF, uh, you would need to have, uh, you know, 110 or 125% coverage, meaning you would have that extra 10 or 25% of annual increment every year uh, before you could issue the debt. The, that is just the one subtle change. I don't mean to get into the weeds and I apologize for that, but it is, I just did want to mention it because it is a little bit different than what you have done in the past. When you've done the tax backed lease transactions, you've not had to formally pledge the increment. Um, and so this would be one minor change, but it is significant enough worth mentioning. But again, the benefit to the city and to the redevelopment commission is that you get the ability to borrow this money at, at rates you could not get in the market from the IFA program, but they do require that formal pledge. Andy, would you kind of explain the implications of that to the commission? Um, um, just in layman's terms. <laughs> yeah, so we kind of explain that, how that affects uh, our future commitments if we were to, like, say, work on a project and do a bond for that project to, to an incentive for that project. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I mentioned, you know, in the schedules, you've got about 
minimum coverage on all your debt. So that means for every dollar of debt service, you got a dollar thirty seven coming in in the future. Um, the way the redevelopment commission has always operated, you want that extra coverage because a you want that security above your debt payments to make sure there's enough TIF, and b you've got other commitments, things you do that are not debt repayment throughout the year. Um, so we will always want you to you know make sure you stay well above that. 135% coverage. To Randy's point, if you were to pledge the TIF um, to other obligations rather than kind of having that informal commitment where we'd want to keep you at a certain level, you would have a more formal commitment to bondholders that you would have to stay above. Um, I think what we would proceed with would probably be 125%. So it keeps you at the levels you're already at. Um, but again, a little formalizes that a little bit more. And then in the future, if we decide to do, say, an increment or I'm sorry, an incentive to a developer or something like that, depending on what we do, we'd have to look at that percent coverage and make sure that we maintain that 125, if you will, versus comparable to like future growth, or like the growth that's happened, et cetera. There's a lot of things that go into that, but we need to always maintain that 125, essentially. Correct. And that'd only be for any time you were going to utilize your consolidated north side south side tiff so if this is you know a, de a developer specific project you're only using tiff from that developer right. then you wouldn't be held to that same coverage level excellent thank you so much for explaining that you're welcome any other questions of anyone that has presented tonight <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> okay, so do I have a motion to accept the res uh, for resolution number one through twenty four um, for the uh, preliminary determining to issue tax increment revenue bonds with a twenty year not to exceed that motion, motion to accept as represented. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. It's always wonderful whenever we can improve infrastructure. So that's great. Um, as one more piece, I'm I'm so sorry, um, Madam President. May I add something to this? Madam Temporary President. <laughs> <laughs> BP. Um, um, we in, in the scope of the engineering work that was done with this, um, we approved a scope. You may recall we're 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 providing the um, cost of the engineering services for Thate GLE. Uh, Mr. Krimke is the engineer of record there. Mr. Wallace has been diligently working with John as well as I have as well with trying to get the everything in order. But Mr. Wallace has taken a step further and he's negotiating as part of uh, the sanitary district on their behalf. There's a piece of land that was kind of not in the scope, if I understand it correctly. Well, if I'm speaking out of turn, please jump in. Um, and then it was not in it was not in the original scope. And basically, in a nutshell, what we're having asked of us tonight is to provide an additional funding. And out, Mr. Wallace, will you just kind of give us the scope? I don't want to misspeak. Yes, when uh, the project was originally funded back in February, uh, there were first specific uh, services. Uh, from the GOE and involved uh, different survey work, uh, preliminary design engineering and construction services. Uh, part of the preliminary engineering involved looking at different routes to get the sewer from uh, the new lift station to the treatment plant. Uh, those various routes were looked at. We're now at a point where we've determined the final route will be coming down uh, the old railroad right away uh, where the uh, public access is, which uh, is under city control. So now that we have the route, uh, there was always plans to do some soil borings for some geotech analysis. Uh, it, since we have the route now, we're looking to move expeditiously with those uh, soil borings uh, in working with uh, uh, Great Lakes. Um, they've determined the number of soil bores and the cost for those uh, at the work in the field. Uh, the desk analysis and issuance of the report is around uh, $25,000. So we just wanted to um, uh, present that to the commission to see if the funding commitment of back in February could be amended uh, to increase it by $25,000 to cover the soil borings and geotech work. And we're, again, we're trying to get that expedited uh, with our engineers in order to meet the uh, bid schedule uh, to go along with the bond documents. Yeah, and the issue was that we, we just didn't 
I don't know if we knew everything about the route, but now we do. We know a lot more about it. So um, if this is something that the city would enter, that the redevelopment commission would entertain, I think we would set a not to exceed number. And I'm thinking maybe 30,000 extra, if that would be acceptable. That way it gives them a little bit of buffer, if you will. Is that acceptable to you? Yes. Well? yes. Um, but again, there is an, um, a need to make this happen sooner than later uh, to, to get us to keep this, this tight schedule that you're seeing right here. And if I could add also, um, the Santa Cruz District has a special meeting scheduled for Wednesday of this week uh, to consider a change order with Great Lakes Engineering to implement the soil bores um, if a decision is made to move forward. So we're ready to go. Okay. Any comments from? Go ahead, go ahead, present. I don't have any further comments. I, like I said, uh, I just want to, this is an opportunity that I don't want to miss out on. Uh, and you heard the the reasons and the, the from Andy and Mr. Rampolo that this is something that um, is new, but there's also a great opportunity to the city to get this at a much discounted rate. So I don't want to miss out. Do we have a motion to amend our amount for geotechnical services to be up by 30,000 not to exceed? Nope. We have to accept as presented. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 No nays. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Wallace, for being here tonight. I really appreciate your time. And thank you, Andy Mauser. Thank you, Randy, as well. Thanks. Okay. Item number 10 on our agenda tonight is proposal to relocate. You are beautiful. Um, so I know that I've held this over a couple of times. I did get a proposal in. I want to let you guys know that um, that proposal was a little bit out of my scope or range. So I kicked it back and asked them to adjust their scope. I have not heard back from them. I was hoping I'd hear back from them by tonight. Um, but I had to kind of reel that one back in from a scope, from a scope standpoint. Um, I don't know that we're um, in a position just uh, as of right now to, um, I guess, to accept that proposal as is. Uh, but there is an in kind of uh, an immediate need to move the you are beautiful sign the you are beautiful sign and that might be more or less just the focus as of right now is to get the sign moved uh and then see where we where we where we shake out at uh in the end so that's kind of where it is right now I, I, hopefully i'll have something more concrete to you at the next meeting okay thank you okay moving on to item number 11 um there is no um so the update is just that we're we're scheduled to be done with the stacking of uh, i don't know if anyone's if you all have seen the garage it's coming right along quickly uh there is no approvals needed tonight but just an update that um they are in the final stages of stacking the garage and putting the concrete pieces in in place so um that should be done by the end of September. And then at that point in time, they will jump on all the fi finishing touches, which will be the the, the, the crawler crane will, will, will be removed. Um, they'll dig out the bottom of the parking lot uh, where the crawler crane cr moved across. Uh, and then they'll start the finishing work. The facade will go on. The interior will be finished. Uh, there's leveling of floors that need to be done, uh, things of that nature. But at the time when they remove the crane and they stop lifting, uh, 8,000 pounds of concrete overhead, uh, they will uh, basically transition into, into building the tower at that point in time. So I'm assuming toward the end of September, uh, first of November, you will start seeing the actual residential um, structure go up. You're seeing the elevator chutes and um, stairwells go up right now, but you will see the, the tower actually start, start to be constructed as soon as those uh, heavy lifts are stopped. It's just too much uh, of a risk for uh, right now to bring on as many people as it's going to take to build that residential tower. And that's really it right now. I haven't, I don't have any other updates from that. Okay. Thank you for updating us on the 11th street uh, station garage and residential tower. Our next item, item 12 is the, you are beautiful site, otherwise known as Sola updates. 
So where we're at with that right now, we're still in the midst of finalizing financials and where things are going to come from. And then after that's solidified, we will be in a position to provide our final and uh, RDA to um, the solo developers, which will probably be in the next few days at this point in time. Moving on along on our agenda item is the report from our legal counsel. Thank you, Alan. A couple of things. Um, first, the usual, uh, there was an executive session before this meeting. No items were discussed that were not permitted by the open door law and no decisions were made. Second thing, just kind of following up on what we did last month with regards to the Northwest Indiana Works uh, Regional Workforce Opportunity Collaborative. Um, I have drafted a memorandum of understanding between us and them based on the approvals that we gave last month. As you remember, that was an approval for $400,000 per year for the next three years to this collaborative effort on the hub. Um, we're still waiting for some approval, so don't no need to take any action on that MOU tonight. Uh, the next is, again, this is something I just, or Skylar and I just received this morning, um, what we've been working on for the past couple of months with respect, with respect to a land donation from the Illinois Indiana Development Company for a property down that basically goes towards improve or a more of a straight shot through for the Singing Sands Trail uh, infrastructure is related to that and allowing us to, um, uh, well, just making that whole area that we've asked for a certain lands from the railroad that allows us then to go forth. The understanding that we've negotiated with them is it's just basically a conveyance on the part of the railroad. Uh, we would accept that, we would record that, and then that would become our property uh, as opposed to railroad property and would go towards furthering the overall enhancements of the Singing Sand Trail and the various other activities that go with that. It also is tied into what we're talking about with the uh, infrastructure project. It is basically the remainder of that railroad right of way that will go all the way to Center Street. Um, before we weren't offered that, reached out to Mr. Bjornstead um, he graciously re replied to me um, and uh, said, hey, didn't even know I owned it. <laughs> so um, I formally made a request and he he said, yes, absolutely. Uh, we don't have a use for it. Um, just didn't know that it was still on our records, our books. Um, so we have it. And what it will do is it, it will provide if we need to expand the Lake Ab or go said to say to Center Street or something to that nature, it allows us some extra ownership of land where we have some straight shots of right of way there. Again, I apologize. I know that and, and you should you hate it when you get something right before a meeting. But I did. That's basically what the agreement calls for uh, between the commission and, and the Illinois Indiana Development Company there giving us land and we're accepting it, uh, both responsible for our individual costs on each side. So we can either go forth with that tonight or we can save. And if you want to have more chance to review that agreement, we can save that till next month too. There really is no urgency to pass that tonight, uh, just that you have it and there will be an urgency to approve it next month. So whatever your pleasure. Any comments from the board? Anyone would like to move forward with that? Or would we like to move it to our next meeting? We can do it next meeting, it's fine. Okay. And then finally, on Friday, I sent you an MOU with regards to a proposed housing project out on Tryon, or called the Tryon Meadow Housing Project. It's no secret Michigan City needs housing. Um, and and so whenever a developer is proposing a housing development, we kind of perk our ears up. Uh, this group, um, and they're specifically called the Sloan Avenue Group and the Redstone Group, a collaboration between the two, uh, is proposing a uh, housing development out on Tryon Road or in that area. Uh, the project itself would call for tentatively uh, eight rental buildings totaling 124 units, 122 uh, townhome, townhome units, 
and then 6,000 feet of retail design uh, to accommodate or address the needs of the residents of that development. The idea or the thought behind doing the MOU at this point is that the developer is under a strict and short due diligence period uh, so that they can acquire the property. They have indicated to us that it would assist them to uh, have an MOU with us just so they know it's the first, first step is that to help them get lower interest rates. So I've drafted an MOU in conjunction and negotiations with them, sent that to you on Friday. Detail, well, tentatively details what the project is, tentatively details the location. And the only thing it really commits us to at this point uh, would be to within 45 days that we would work work with them over the next 45 days of developing uh, and drafting and coming to an agreement on an uh, economic development um, project. Uh, or agreement. Um, as with other MOUs that we draft, it's not a binding agreement. We're not out anything. We're not on the hook for anything. It just allows them to go forth with their due diligence on acquiring the property um, and that we would work with them on a public-private partnership uh, in the event they acquire the property and that they would work with us in terms of trying to um, well, I'm trying to come up with an agreement for that. So what I'm asking for tonight is so that we can provide to them an MOU to assist them with that. It may go no further than that. It may come back within 45 days or somewhere else in between. Um, gotcha. Um, I would say that we've been working pretty diligently with this group. Um, they're very green. They've been pretty aggressive uh, with with respect to um, doing the things that we asked them to do. And they've also worked with Mr. Mauser to do an analysis. We've never really done a TIF, a housing TIF here. So this is kind of new to me and new to Michigan City. Um, but... Um, we went ahead and did a, uh, a TIF analysis on this just to see what, what would the potential be. Uh, we know that it's going to go toward infrastructure. What is the cost of that infrastructure? Um, they came prepared with numbers in hand of what it will cost to do the infrastructure of a project of this size and uh, made that presentation to us um, and to the Redevelopment Commission as well. And then uh, moving forward from that point, I... I, I don't know that they've not done anything we've asked them to do at this time. So again, this MOU is just a commitment to say, we are still gonna partner together and move forward uh, with trying to make this a reality, essentially. Yes, Mayor, I think you had, did you wanna add any comments? Yeah. Thank you. Good, um, good evening. I just wanted to share to um, the Sloan Development Group. They've done, you know, I've had a brief opportunity to to uh, conversate with them and see, you know, what they're looking to do in Michigan City. And I think it's a great project. Number one, um, it's it's not always um, doesn't always come to fruition with projects that they come with their their ducks in a row. I'm ready to go um, without asking for a whole lot. So um, the fact that they they had their facts together and that everything we've asked them for, um, they've done it. But also, um, this would be new for us as far as a residential uh, housing tip. And um, anytime we can use monies like that to and to support our infrastructure and to improve it, the better. Um, I think that is a wonderful way to use it. Um, we know that some of our infrastructure is old or we don't have it. So um, I think this is a, wonder, a wonderful way to not only uh, improve our infrastructure, but also to increase our housing stock. So uh, I fully support this project and look forward to seeing what they can get done and, and how this partnership will, will blossom into something uh, more and the sooner the better, as far as I'm concerned. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. 
one more comment too. Assuming that we do get to the point of having an, um, the development and, and present to this commission an economic development agreement for action, uh, the developer knows they need to be here and they will give you a full overview of what this project is going to be. Uh, this isn't something that will just be done with us. I mean, they. this is just the first step so they can acquire the property. Once we get that, once they've done that, and assuming they are successful in doing that, then you'll get the whole shebang uh, probably sometime either in October or November. Alan, are we asking for approval over the MOU? I want to do the approval of the MOU so I can give that to them tomorrow so they can work on acquiring the property. That's just the first step. Okay. Just making sure I understood what we're at. Yeah, well, no, okay. just the MOU for tonight. That's all. And I'm trying to remember the proper name. It's Tryon. It's the uh, Tryon Meadow Housing Project. Meadow Housing, okay. Okay, do we have a motion to approve legal counsel to drop the MOU for the Tryon Meadow? It's grown up. Oh, you have this. What I can't right. yeah. I'm sorry. To approve the MOU drawn up by legal counsel for the Tryon Meadow development. Housing project. Yeah. Housing project. I'd like to make a motion for approval of the Tryon Meadow housing project. MOU. Support. Okay. Now that we have our motion, a second. Do we, um, I'm sorry, just messed up. Um, <laughs> all in favor say aye. Aye. And we have no nays. And that's all I have. Thank you. Sorry about that. Our next item on the agenda is a report from our director, Skyler. Um, I don't have a lot to report tonight. I think I've given you kind of all the things that are on my mind right now or on my plate right now. Uh, I will say that um, there's a, a, a lot of things that are going on in Michigan City right now. Um, uh, notices for Ready 2.0 are coming out probably in the very near future. I would venture to say that we're in line to receive some of those that grant funding. Uh, I would also give you an update on Fifth and Pine, uh, the Memorial Hospital, and because you asked. And I would say that we've moved forward with, uh, as I gave you last time, we've moved forward with four. We had seven replies to our RFP. We moved forward with four of those replies. We have scheduled meetings, uh, individual meetings with each development team of those four. We will be doing that um, this 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 week uh, in the next two weeks. Um, and then after that, so what this is, this next round is an opportunity to clarify what we expect of the developers and what their expect, expectations of the city are, but also to give us a clear picture of how exactly we're gonna move forward and what that partnership looks like. After that, they will have an opportunity to refine uh, really their best case scenario proposal to us and really give us their best and final offer to us. Um, and that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, that will be probably a 12 week process um, with respect to best and final offer. Um, keep in mind, this is a very large project. It's seven acres of land approximately. I would just tell the public that you're not going to see seven acres of land get developed overnight. It will be probably a phased approach, uh, but uh, we have to start somewhere. And uh, the way that we have positioned this uh, the RFP and this uh, proposal process is as that we uh, asked for, for, for the financials first rather than the pretty pictures to make sure that there's capacity to fulfill the project and get the project done so we don't fail. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Skylar. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, commissioner comments. At this time, we have no commissioner comments. Um, our next meeting is to be determined as city hall is going to be closed um, at our, we normally would have met uh, 1014, but that day is an op um, observation of Columbus Day. Um, so I mentioned that will be. 
Is there a time that you guys would like to propose to set that meeting um, right now? Would you like to go? Um, I guess I'd probably need to look at what's available with respect to the chambers. Um, looking back at Debbie, Debbie may have to provide us a poll and allow me some time to look and see if like the 15th is open or, you know, if the, or if you want to go to that next Monday. Um, so I don't know that we can make that decision tonight without looking at the, uh, at the availability of chambers. Okay. So as soon as that's determined, that'll be published. Um, I'd like to do that. And let me say that I'd probably give you like one or two days, like say, Hey, it's available on example 15th and this day. Uh, is that, does this work? Which one works the best for the majority? Okay. Keep in mind, um, also playing into, we need to make sure we stay on track with the uh, any approvals we need for anything moving forward. Okay. And then finally, I want to thank everyone for attending and for all of your input and hard work. And it's what makes us all you know move forward here in Michigan City. So thank you very much. And we are adjourned.